Thursday. It's Thursday, February 21st, 2008. Time once again for the Morning Swim Show. Now in this edition, we're going to start off with water polo by calling Serbia to check on the safety of the USA men's water polo team who are over there competing during this time of political unrest. After that, we get Natalie Coughlin on the line, hot off another world record, to talk about that great race. And we end with a look inside Swimming World magazine. Let's get right to the news. Now, in recent world events over in Serbia, there's world news that Ser Serbia and Kosovo are going through some political unrest. And as a, uh, it turns out that the United States water polo team is in Serbia. So we thought we'd get a hold of Igor Milanovic, who's in Serbia right now. He's a 1984 and 1988 Olympic gold medalist to talk about the situation. We got him on the line. Thanks for joining us, Igor. Thank you for calling. <laughs> And uh, I would like to say hello to um, all who are, who are listening to us. <laughs> well, now we understand that there's a lot of political unrest going, unrest going on right now. What's, what's the general atmosphere in the country? The uh, real atmosphere is that uh, every man in the Serbia, uh, after Sunday decisions, uh, is very upset, disappointed, and uh, very angry. And uh, we we feel that uh, it is not uh, justice. On the other hand, uh, life is uh, completely normal. And uh, if we put out uh, a few incidents in front of uh, USA embassy and the Slovenian embassy, uh, it, it was not uh, nothing, uh, uh, nothing else. Uh, life in Belgrade uh, is going on. Tomorrow is a meeting, the biggest meeting, I think, and uh, uh, the, um, I, I'm expecting a lot of people uh, on the streets to demonstrate uh, our, let's say, that disappointment about these decisions and all of these political situations. Well, in the United States, we're used to demonstrations, and, and hopefully that will be a peaceful demonstration. But getting to the USA water polo team, are they safe right now, in your opinion? They are completely safe, uh, and everybody in uh, Serbia is safe. Uh, I think that uh, it is not uh, uh, possible to discuss about uh, safeness. Uh, I spent uh, more than uh, four hours every day uh, with... Uh, guys from national team, your national team, and uh, with Terry Schroeder, Robert Lean, and uh, other uh, guys from uh, expedition. Well, it's always great to have a, another international point of view of international water polo, especially on Olympic level. Thanks for joining us, Igor. I'm gl so glad that uh, you're safe, and uh, it's good to hear that the USA water polo team there is safe, and we wish you a lot of uh, luck in the transition period going on in your country. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm ready always. Moving on to reaction time, we're still talking about the Missouri Grand Prix where the world records and American records went down. So we thought we'd track down Natalie Coughlin setting the world record in the 100 meter backstroke. We've got her on the line right now, so let's talk to her. Thanks for joining us, Natalie. Oh, uh, thank you. A world record. What's really interesting is that world record you sat on for five years and then you busted it wide open at the World Championships in 2006 and you come back and you lower it again this last weekend. Were you surprised? Um, well, yeah, I was shocked, to say the least, uh, that, I, that I broke it this past weekend. Um, but, you know, like the past several years, I've been working on just, just my stroke in general and, and backstroke, and I think results just don't always happen when you want. Um, and I just think the past year, all that hard work over the past, Well, something showed because the your splits were kind of kind of different. Did you have a chance to, to analyze the split from the World Championships compared to the split? Um, yeah, I didn't analyze anything. Uh, I, I do know that my split going out was, I think, four tenths slower yes. than uh, my world record pace from Melbourne, um, and that's actually why the announcer, who's a really good announcer, he didn't even announce that it was a world record until several seconds later because <laughs> he wasn't really expecting much because I was a half minute off my um, world record split. Uh, but I, it wasn't anything conscious. I think just going into that race, 
all I was really thinking about was <laughs> having dinner later that night and just swimming well and, and going home. And then I think the lack of emotion actually helped me to take it out at a, at a better pace and come home a lot stronger. So when, you, when you're coming home, how do you count for the faster back half of that split? Sorry? How do you count for the, the, the faster back half of that race? Yeah, well, I think it was just the lack of emotion. Um, and I just didn't go out as fast as I normally do. Uh, if you look at my, my races from the entire meet, I just I didn't really have the speed that I normally have. Um, just I think it's just time of the season and... Um, where I'm at in my training right now and, 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 that, and those types of things. But, um, you know, aerobically, I'm in really, really good shape. It's just I, I'm kind of lacking that power that I normally have at the beginning. Um, but, yeah, I, I really don't know what happened in that race. It was the strangest race I probably had <laughs> in the recent, you know, my recent career. And um, by far the most surprised I've been after a race in a very, very long time. So is going under 59 well within uh, your vision? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't want to make any predictions, uh -huh. but I, I do know that I could improve off of that race. What confidence does this give you, and how does this set you up for the Olympic trials? You know, I have a lot of confidence coming off of Missouri now. Like, not only was my backstroke really strong, but looking at... Uh, my the first meet of the season for me, the the 200 free that's my second best time ever. Um, the 100 free that's you know very very good for the beginning of the season. And the 50 free, I mean I don't even know what I'm doing in that event. So um, I, I'm really happy about all my events, and uh, I, I believe I have the Santa Clara Invitational, the Stanford Grand Prix, Olympic trials, and I I might do another meet in Southern California, but. It's really just about building the momentum off of um, these meets as I get, you know, further into the summer. Have you decided on your Olympic uh, trial schedule? What events you're going to try? Uh, no, I still haven't decided for sure, and that's probably something I should do soon. But uh, the hundred backstroke and the hundred freestyle, I'll definitely swim. It's just kind of up in the air whether I'll do the hundred butterfly or the fifty free or. Um, you know, any of those other events. But um, right now I'm leaning towards Hunter Back and Hunter Free for sure. Well, congratulations on your world record, and hopefully we'll stay in touch as you continue your quest for a more Olympic competition in gold. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you. Time for Inside Swimming World Magazine. Every Thursday, we bring you exclusive content that can only be found inside Swimming World Magazine. Now, for those people who are premium subscribers, you can go in and you can pull out the current issue right out of your computer. Well, actually, it's a PDF. It appears on your screen. But in the current issue, on the swim section, Carlin Pipes Nielsen talks about 10 great ideas that can help swimmers meet their training goals. She ends the article by reinforcing the fact that your time is precious and you need to enjoy what you're doing when you exercise. Over on page 20 and 21, J.R. Rosania introduces the 10-minute bedroom warm-up routine. It is a series of exercises that will get your body ready to face the day as soon as your feet touch the floor. No matter what age you are, this is an important routine that can be practiced your entire life. Further down on those same pages is Gutter Talk. You can click on the red interactive icon which will link you to our website to get more information about all the world records broken last fall at the Southern Pacific Masters Association Short Course Meters Meet. All this and more when you subscribe to Swimming World Magazine and read it online as a premium member. That concludes this edition of the Morning Swim Show. I'm your host Brent Rutemeller and if you'd like to contact us you can call us at 1-800-345-7946 or you can email us at mail at morningswimshow.com. Once again I'm your host Brent Rutemeller saying if you want to win, first help someone else win.